Well, I know it can be hard getting into top schools like Harvard, Yale, Princeton. You have to spend hours filing out applications and writing essays until your fingers are numb from typing. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to get accepted without all the hassle so you don't have to worry about anything ever again. I'm going to show you the exact steps that will get you into an Ivy League school of your choice without having to go through a grueling application process. Also, watch the video till the end as I will talk about five extremely less known factors that are absolutely critical and mostly ignored by applicants, other consultants, and even industry experts. These five factors can make or break your applications. So make sure to watch the entire video to get these extremely rare insights into Ivy League admissions. So what do you need to do to get into one of these schools? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Shirish Gupta, and I empower people to hack their success, rise above the challenges, and confidently create an extraordinary life they deserve. Well, let's start by understanding what are Ivy League schools. The Ivy League schools are some of the most prestigious and well-known universities in the world. Well, they are known for their excellent academics for being some of the most difficult schools to get into. Yes, that's true. The Ivy League schools are eight private universities in northeastern United States. They are Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard University, Princeton, University of Pennsylvania, and Yale University. Well, these universities rank amongst the top universities across the world. And in this video, this is actually this video is applicable to all other top universities as well, such as MIT, Stanford, Caltech, and others, which are not part of Ivy League, but their education quality is absolutely world class. In short, this video can help you get into any world-class university in the whole world. All these universities have a reputation for offering excellent programs, both at undergraduate level or postgraduate level, and having very competitive acceptance rates. These colleges attract students that have an extremely high caliber of work ethic, college prep knowledge, and determination to do well. Ivy League schools focus on well-rounded students, not only high achievers. While this is pretty much true for all universities, Ivy League schools do seek out diversity of opinions and backgrounds when they recruit applicants. They want students who will not only benefit themselves, but also their college community. Well, now let's talk about the academic fit at Ivy League colleges. Okay, when it comes to academic life at an Ivy League school, you must know this. All Ivy League colleges are extremely rigorous and challenging. Students are expected to maintain high grades and to participate in variety of extracurricular activities. The workload can be overwhelming at times, but it's definitely worth it to attend one of these prestigious universities. So you must be academically active and willing to take high course load. You must be in top 10 to 20% of your class. Basically, apply to Ivy League if you are good with academics because it will be too demanding if you're not. One of the benefits of attending an Ivy League school is the excellent faculty that you'll have the opportunity to learn from. These professors are experts in their field and truly care about their student success. These schools offer unique internship and job opportunities that are not available at other universities. They want you to succeed not only in college, but also in your future career. The classes at Ivy League school are also very demanding. Students are expected to think critically and engage in thoughtful discussion with classmates. You will definitely need to put in work to get high grades at these colleges. If you want to study at a more technical or pre-professional college, then there are plenty of great options for you as well. Even some Ivy League colleges have liberal art education, which means they offer diverse academic paths. Most Ivy Leagues are research-based, so they are good if you have research interests or want to pursue research as part of your degree. One very important thing to remember while applying to Ivy League schools, they are very competitive. And if you are someone who is not able to perform under pressure, then don't look for the Ivy League schools because you will be competing with some top students of the world. If you're not very good academically, then skip Ivy League and look for other colleges. More competition means more pressure. And if you are someone who wants a lighter academic load and less competitive environment, there are many other great universities other than Ivy League schools which you can look for. So make sure to factor in your ability to handle academic load and competition while choosing to study at Ivy League College. Well, after academic fit, now let's move on to social fit at Ivy League Colleges. When it comes to social life, Ivy League universities are known for their extremely active and diverse college communities in most colleges. Students at these universities come from all different backgrounds and have a variety of interests. Well, there is something for everyone on campus, whether you want to get involved in Greek life, go to parties every weekend, or join a bunch of clubs. 
Though Ivy League offers a lot of things to do on campus, the academic workload might be too much in most places. And most students are involved in academics and won't be able to enjoy a lot of extracurricular activities because students clock as many as eight to 10 hours every day to complete assignments, prepare for tests and other academic commitments. Ivy League college students also have a lot of college related obligations, but they are more flexible. In college, students aren't expected to be at a, at a certain place at a certain time. All you need is to show up in the classes or for an exam or meeting from time to time. So if you're a self-starter and don't require handholding, then Ivy Leagues are very good for you. But if you are someone who needs handholding and constant support, Ivy League environment might not be the good fit for you. You need to be independent and be able to pursue your academic interest on your own. Well, of course, students have academic advising on campus, but it's not to spoon feed you. Ivy League colleges expect you to be independent and motivated to do well at college. Well, after social fit, let's move on to financial fit of Ivy League schools. Well, Ivy League colleges are some of the most expensive universities. Yes, sad but true. Generally, the tuition rates at these schools are much higher than that of other universities. The tuition fee for attending an Ivy League school can vary depending upon the college. It ranges from $40,000 to about $90,000 per year for undergraduate and postgraduate programs. So, as you can see, the cost of attendance can vary quite a bit from one college to the other. But generally, it's on the higher side. One of the best ways to reduce your cost of college is to apply for scholarships. Well, there are a number of scholarships available specifically for students who want to attend an Ivy League school. Additionally, many Ivy League schools offer generous financial aid packages to their students. There's a lot of financial aid available to students who want to attend an Ivy League school. Each school has a different financial aid package that offers a variety of options. In fact, I've done a separate video on top 10 world's fully funded scholarships. If you want, you can watch that video after completing this video by clicking the link above. Well, as stated earlier, scholarships are one of the most effective methods to lower your education expenses. There is a variety of scholarships open to students who want to attend an Ivy League institution such as merit-based, academic-based, athletic, music, and arts scholarship. Grants are another type of financial aid that is offered by many Ivy League schools. Grants are awards that do not have to be repaid and they can be used to cover a variety of college expenses such as tuition, room and board and books. Loans are another type of financial aid that is offered by many Ivy League schools. Loans must be repaid and they can be used to cover college expenses such as tuition and books. Well, I'll tell you something very important here. Though many scholarships are available in Ivy League colleges, but you must be a high performer. By that I mean you must have demonstrated higher level success, which could be success at a national or even international level, or could be how you have managed to defy all circumstances and still be able to perform at high levels. The point is, show past success because that is the best predictor of your future or potential success. But finally, the expense of attending an Ivy League institution is determined by your own financial situation. There are a number of methods to cut costs, so don't be scared away by applying from because of high prices. So what do you need in order to get into this Ivy League college? Well, let's dive right in and talk about my admission advice to triple your chances of getting admission to an Ivy League school. The ideas I'm going to share now come from a decade long experience working with students for career and college admission. When people ask me how they can get into an Ivy League school, well, to answer that question, there are so many factors that come into play while applying to colleges these days. But let me just say this, don't be discouraged if you are not a perfect student academically. Being clever is more important than grades when it comes down to getting accepted by colleges. But of course, grades do matter since you will be attending an academic institution. It's true that Ivy League colleges are pretty selective when it comes to college applications. They are eager to find students who will bring something different and unique to their college community. Ivy League schools are looking for something more from their applicants. They want students who will bring diversity to the classroom, as well as those who will benefit the larger community in some way. Well, let's have a look at some factors which are looked into by admission counselors for getting into an Ivy League school. I will talk about five common factors that you must already know, but I will give you my insight into these common factors. And then I will talk about five extremely less known factors that are absolutely critical and mostly ignored by applicants, other consultants, and even industry experts. 
So let's start with the common factors first. Number one are grades. Well, it's a well-known fact that to be accepted into these prestigious colleges, you will need a great education. A minimum grade point average of 3.5 or higher is necessary to be considered for admission into an Ivy League college. That's about 90% and above in school or about 40 IB points out of 42, which is about 8 CGPA out of 10 in college years. Also, your grades should have increased over the years because college admission offices want to see that you're committed to your education and that you're serious about college. If your grades have been dropping over time, college admission officers may question whether the college will be a good fit for you or not. But you don't have to race to get to the top position. If you are comfortable with your studies and it is reflected in your grades, you're all set to cross this entry barrier. Also, they will want to see that you have taken as many challenging courses as possible during your high school or college. So don't opt for easy courses just because it is easier to score them. In fact, pick up some challenging courses Stretch yourself as this will show your character to colleges. Most students pick up easy courses because they can score well. Only a few would take tough courses and will work hard to cross over the challenge. Be the latter. Number two is standardized tests. Along with your grades, the college admission officers want to see students who have high scores on standard tests such as SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT. These college entrance examinations are used to measure college level academic achievement. Students who can score high on these College entrance examination are more likely to be admitted into college than lower scores. Again, it's a gatekeeper. Once you score above a certain number, you're all set. Taking AP exams for undergraduate admission can be beneficial for most Ivy League schools as you are going beyond your normal school courses. Next is outstanding college admission essays. Well, you also need to write good college admission essays in order to get admission to colleges. The college admission essays will show your writing skills and your ability to express your thoughts clearly, which is really very important. It needs to be interesting, but not showy. You don't want it to seem like you're bragging. It needs to be written in college level English and you need to use college level vocabulary. Don't use slang or derogatory words. Your essay must reflect your personality, challenges and achievements beyond your grades. It's about you as a person. Next is your extracurricular involvement. Well, this is also known as non-academic profile. There's a very common statement in our organization where we work with a select group of students. You are more than your marks. This is so true in life and I really colleges understand that. Your involvement outside of the classroom is really very important. And if you are wondering why, it is because it builds your character, your personality and defines you as a person. What do you do outside the classroom tells a lot about you, your interests, your hobbies, your passion, your commitment and other things. It doesn't matter what you do, could be sports, music, MUMs, student government, writing, teaching or anything else. This also includes your work experiences, research papers and everything else. In short, what matters is who you are more than your grades. Participating in activities also shows that you can manage both academic and extracurricular well. And that's an excellent trait to have to be successful at college. Lastly, to make your application stand out, you need letters of recommendation from people who can speak about your college level skills, achievements and readiness for further studies. Letters of recommendation should come from school teachers or college professors who can attest to your academic excellence over your persona. You can also take it from your professional and your employers. If you've taken college level courses in high school, it is important to get letters of recommendation from college professors who can speak to you about your college level skills. Well, these were some of the standard things you need, but I think there's more to Ivy League than just these common factors. They look for more, and I'm gonna tell you my top five factors that can literally tenfold your chances of getting admission to top universities. Now listen closely, because this is definitely not a common knowledge. And in my experience over the past 12 years, only 5% of applicants actually know about these factors. These factors are super critical for your admission success. And one of the main reasons for your success for our students enrolled in our services is we create these factors in their profiles. Let's look into these extremely less known admission factors of Ivy League universities. The very first one is having a vision. Well, now I understand that you might not be able to figure out everything and you really don't need to, but you need to develop a vision for yourself. In my experience, almost every student applies to Ivy League school because they think it's the ultimate goal to study at the top schools, but Ivy League schools do not look that way. In fact, I believe it's a very primitive way of applying to colleges. Think about how an education from an Ivy League will prepare you to achieve your vision 
and your big goals in life. And again, it's okay to be vague, but it's not okay to be clueless. Next is leadership skills. The college admission officers want to know if you have leadership skills. They want to see if you are well-rounded as an individual. If your application does not show any evidence of leadership skills or engagement in school or college and your local community, admission officers will not be impressed with your application. Leadership experiences can bolster diversity, which means interacting with different groups of people and collecting and making decisions in a diverse environment. More diversity you have, the better your chances of admission. Third, less known and extremely important factor is giving back to the community. Well, colleges are looking for more than college level academic excellence when they read about accomplishments. They want to know that you have given back to the school, college or local community in some way or the other. For example, if you were a part of an organization that helped high school students from less fortunate backgrounds, you might want to mention that. Almost every Ivy League or top level university would have a mission to improve society or humanity. Be aligned. And showing that you have been already been aligned with those ethos can bring amazing results for you. Make sure to think about your contribution to your college, school, society, or community. Take up projects where you can build this. Next, and probably a big one, is having a depth in your profile. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, almost everyone applies to colleges thinking they have to do everything, like participating in 20 different activities. But they don't know more than this breadth. Top colleges are looking for depth in your profile. Yes, this is to pick up one or two core areas and go in depth. Show commitment and dedication for an extended period of time in that particular area. Now, this could be music, dance, research, anything. But having depth is so very important for your admissions. Most applicants completely miss this. So pick up one or two activities and commit to them for not for days, not for months, but for years. Take them to an advanced level. Progress in those areas, maybe from school or college to regional to national or international. Showing depth and progressing to a higher level is such a great proof of your past success that predicts your future success. Make sure to pick your depth early and commit to it. Last and probably my favorite is the biggest of all factors is your impact. Yes, that's the word. Impact. Most applicants just tell admission officers what they did, but they really care about is to think about what impact they have created. In fact, most students do things just to show on their resume, but those kind of students hardly get success in getting admission to Ivy Leagues. Most students who get an admit work to create an impact through the work they do in their high school or college, or even outside academic institution, maybe at home or community. Always strive to do something that can create an impact. So rather than just doing an internship to show your resume, do something that can benefit the organization you're interning. Did your ideas or research help the organization to get more clients and in better revenue? Can your work be helpful to a few hundreds or even thousands of people? When we work with our students, we specifically bring this factor into consideration. What is your impact? And I get it. You might be thinking, how can I do it? This is the very first thought in almost everybody's mind. But with a few suggestions, you can always think about an impact you can bring with your work. Remember to think about impact as it will help you get admissions to top colleges. If you're unsure how to do it, feel free to reach us and we will help you with this or any other requirements for career selection and college admission. So these were the top five extremely less known factors that applicants actually miss. And now you know, and I want you to use this rare piece of knowledge and integrate in your applications to get admission to Ivy League schools. Remember, college admissions officers, they read hundreds of applications every week. And you just have, on average, wait for it, just 12 minutes to dazzle. Make sure your application stands out. The college admissions officers wants to learn more about you as a person and how this college is going to help you grow as a student and as a person. If your application doesn't stand out, it will go straight to the bin. Well, it is important to remember that competition for admission in Ivy League schools is extremely fierce. So you will need to have an outstanding application if you want to stand out. The best time to apply to an Ivy League school is fall of your senior year of high school or at the beginning of your final year of your college. But the actual preparation for your application and profile must begin one to two years prior to the application time because this will give you enough time to build your profile with the factors I've just mentioned. If you're just in time for applying, don't lose heart. Just make sure to submit high quality essays and applications. 
If you need any help, feel free to get in touch with us and we can help you make this process super simple for you. Well, in the end, I would like to say, colleges want students who have some idea of what they want to do with their lives. If you have career goals, college admission officers will want to know that you have considered how college is going to help you reach those goals. Ultimately, the decision of whether or not to attend an Ivy League school comes down to your personal preferences. If you want the best education possible and are willing to work hard, then an Ivy League college might be the best college for you. But don't just be limited to top colleges just because they are brand. I want you to work to build yourself as a brand. Work on it and I'm sure you'll be super successful.